The image in front of you is of the grandfather tree, the largest living tree in the world, located in one of Chile's national parks. It stands over 60 meters tall, equivalent to a 20-story building, with a trunk diameter of about 4, 25 meters, and it is 5,480 years old. This means it has been living since 3400 BC, which is before King Nini's united the two lands of Egypt. Despite this, it is still alive and producing leaves. This is the Methuselah tree, a bristlecone pine located in the Inyo National Forest in the White Mountains of the USA, and it is 4,850 years old. Trees are undoubtedly among the most long-lived creatures, showing how short our lifespan is in comparison to the age of the world. But here arises a question, how do we know these exact ages? Like 5,800 or 4,800 years? How is the age of trees determined? Welcome! The first and easiest way to determine the age of trees is if we have a record of their planting date. For instance, in Egypt, there is a very famous tree, the Bengal fig tree located in front of the Cairo Tower. This tree is exactly 155 years old at the time of recording this episode because Khadiv Ismail ordered in 1868 that this tree be brought from India and many others were planted in various places in Ismailia, Giza, Kanatir, and Zamalek, including this tree. But that's not the question we are looking for. We are asking about naturally grown trees, which constitute most of the trees in the world. How do we determine their age? The most famous method to determine the age of trees relies on the rings found inside the tree trunk. If we look at any cut tree trunk, we will notice concentric rings. Each ring represents a year in the life of the tree. But why is this? Simply put, trees grow annually, meaning every year in the spring. Trees begin to produce a new soft layer around their trunks called the cambium layer, which consists of thin layers of wood and bark. This layer each time is larger than the previous one, but with the onset of autumn. This growth gradually stops, and the new outer layer turns into hard, rough wood. When the next spring comes, a new soft layer begins to form around the trunk, and the cycle continues year after year. Therefore, we can consider each ring inside the tree trunk to represent a complete year. Up to this point, everything seems fine without any problems, but you haven't noticed one small thing. To determine the age of a specific tree using this method, we have to cut it down to examine its rings. This means we would end up destroying the trees on earth if we want to know their age. So, if we want to preserve the tree and determine its age at the same time, how can we do that? There is a smart way to determine the age of the tree without cutting it down, and this method also relies on the rings. First, we use a tool called an incremental borer, which is a hollow tube shaped like a cylinder usually with a small diameter of about 2 centimeters on average. The tube is open at both ends. One end has a sharp, spiral tip, and the other end has a handle similar to a crank. The dendrochronologist, tree expert, inserts the sharp end into the tree trunk and starts turning the handle until the hollow tube penetrates the tree trunk entirely. Then, he uses another tool called an extractor, which resembles a corer used to hollow out vegetables like eggplants and zucchini for stuffing. The expert inserts the extractor into the hollow tube that is now inside the tree and pulls out a long sample from the tree's core. The sample will have the same ring seen when cutting the tree trunk, as if we had cut the tree and examined it. This way, we can easily determine the tree's age without cutting it down. Moreover, the hole made in the tree heals quickly and does not cause long-term harm to the tree. Someone might now say, Okay, I know the tree's age, but how does that benefit me? The truth is, we can learn amazing information from the rings inside the tree trunks, to the extent that there's an entire field called dendrochronology, the study of tree rings. One of the things we can learn is the natural events and climate changes, and sometimes even human activities, that occurred in the past centuries. We agreed that trees form new rings in their trunks every year. These rings are naturally influenced by environmental conditions and climate changes throughout the year. If we look at a tree trunk and find a very wide ring, it means that particular year had moderate temperatures and abundant rainfall. On the other hand, if we find a very narrow ring, it means that year had little rain and harsh climatic conditions, indicating a drought season. But these are not the only things we can learn from the rings. The tree trunk you see in the picture is from a tree that was in Los Padres National Forest in the USA. When we look at this tree, we notice that at some point in its life, it was exposed to fire. Not only that, but by counting the rings, we know that the fire occurred in 1894. Let's look at this trunk, which belonged to a tree in a glacial area. The rings in the trunk were regular, but at a certain point, they started to become wide on one side and narrow on the other. 
Researchers deduced from this pattern that the tree was constantly exposed to impacts from the narrow side, concluding that it was continuously hit by avalanches. They even determined the years when these avalanches were most frequent, which turned out to be in 1993. Additionally, from the ring's shapes, conditions, and colors, we can learn important information, such as if there was an insect attack in a particular year. Moreover, if we find a specific pattern repeating in all trees of a similar age in the same area, we can easily infer what the environment was like in that region over the past years. The more ancient the trees, the more it allows us to understand the environment and life in the past, especially with trees that have lived for thousands of years like the ones we talked about at the beginning of the episode. It's as if the trees are a living library recording environmental changes and events in nature. That's it. Who reached this point? Everyone who did. You are the best. Give us a like before you leave so we know how many reached the end. And don't forget, if you have a question that comes to you in the middle of the night and puzzles you, write it in the comments under the video so we can answer it. Most of the episodes we make now are based on your comments. Goodbye.